John turned around to me and told me that we were going to be putting the Bengal into the actual PU. And at first I thought he was just pulling my leg, because I mean, it's the Bengal. The Bengal, the biggest ship that we're ever going to have in the PU, floating around. And I was like, well, is it, what, is it just going to appear and fly away, or is it just in a poster? And he's like, no, no, no. I, I want it to be like we had the Javelin last year, where it comes in, it shoots, the players can try and fight it, and it flies around. I'm like, cool, that, that's not a, a small amount of work. That's a little bit of a, a minor task on top of everything else that's going on. The Bengal itself had a lot of old issues with it. Compared to a lot of our newer ships, it didn't feel as good, it didn't look as good. So we saw this as a great opportunity to go in and just fix some of this old legacy things that we'd done with the actual ship setup. So we, we started by fixing the, the problems first of all. So the, the, the giant engines at the back, the whole thing was in a single thruster. So we, we started by cutting that out, making the actual nacelle part of the main ship geo. And then after making the ship geo, we then attached the actual thrusters as thrusters. So they work as thrusters. And then we found that it didn't have proper thruster placement because it was using the original IFCS system that didn't need it completely in IFCS 2. Obviously, it's, it's not fake, it, it's real. So we had to actually go in and place new thrusters and rearrange some of the old ones just to get it to feel nice and to fly the way we'd expect it to. And after that, the, we had to then look at the weapons. The, this is the Bengal. It's got over 90 turrets to it that function, that fire, that fight back, that you have to actually deal with. So we went through and we saw that a lot of them were very nose heavy placement. So we then completely changed the design of the location of the turrets, which went through a couple of iterations to make sure everyone was happy with it. It felt really weird for the entire carrier to have a complete front nose battery. So we moved a lot of the weaponry and a lot of the cover around so that it was evenly distributed around the ship for the, the missile turrets, the phalanxes. After that was all done, you know, those really small, minor, insignificant tasks, it was then a case of actually having it work, because unsurprisingly, when you put the Bengal into the, the PU, it doesn't run very well, because there's a lot of entities. It, it was a huge performance hit. Like, it, it was insane. Even internally, we were seeing a, a massive performance drop. So the next job was to try and optimize this, to actually get it to run in a decent way. If you have a look at any of the AI ships that the, the pirates use in the PU, there's physically a dude sat in the seat, which at the end of the day costs, everything has a cost involved with it. So we started to explore a couple of different ways to do it. One route we took was to hide the whole thing behind this area so it just wouldn't render it, wouldn't call it, wouldn't draw any of it. And that, that gave us a lot of wins, but we also saw it as an opportunity to try and do something we haven't really done on ships before, which was to have actual AI modules controlling the turrets. So we start playing about with that. We hit issues because we've never tried to implement it on this sort of scale. But after a lot of people doing a lot of hard work and playing about with it and making slight tweaks here and there, we ended up with the, the AI turret module, which was a huge, huge performance boost. And I spawned in a load of um, pirate Idrises to fight the thing. And it was just amazing watching all of the guns point in different directions and just fire everywhere. It looked amazing. And then the missiles were coming in, it was shooting down all the missiles everywhere. And I probably spent a good half an hour just trying to actually hit it with a missile. There's just that much gunfire that it just, it looks great. It, it's hard to describe how cool it looks when it's actually firing a, a group of people. The impact of seeing the Bengal working, flying around was just, incredible for people and the Bengals something I've been working on for quite a long time for Squadron 42 but once it's in the PU people can fly around it and just take in the sheer size of it it's just incredibly huge and having an event like Invictus meant that we push specific tech and specific things in a way that we're going to be used later down the line so that's a step forward towards having unmanned AI turrets on ships. We learn better ways to optimize the way we actually have AI crew inside the ship. Because everything we do can be reused. We learn from it, we improve from it, and it, it can help everything as a whole. It's a lot of work, and we 
we as developers spend a lot of time focusing on really minor details and sometimes we we, we just tunnel on little things and think well is this is this time I'm spending on this one little thing really worth it but then when we see it in the community and seeing how much people love it and how wild they go for it just seeing their responses to it it just completely lifts my spirits up every time so worth it in the end once we actually got it in really really cool Invictus has quickly become one of the major highlights of our year, as well as a, a fine addition to the Star Citizen experience overall. And the Bengal was just one part of everything that goes into making the event so special each and every year. Now, from looking back, let's look ahead. It's Sprint Report time, so let's get to it. Starting things off, members of the UI team have completed a sprint porting many of the transit signs found throughout the Persistent Universe to use a newer and more robust version of our building blocks tech. Now, as with everything that makes this transition, it not only allows for easier swapping of various styles and themes without having to change the underlying information, but it's also far more efficient and less resource intensive, leading to performance gains all over when every little bit helps. This is a small sampling, but the team is looking forward to adding more and varied styles to the various interactions players encounter throughout the verse. Meanwhile, the character team is close to completing work on the Grey Cat armor that was revealed alongside the Grey Cat Rock DS earlier this year. Now, while it's designed to specifically support mining operations, Fashion Forward citizens will still find a lot to like here. Whoever said support roles couldn't look badass obviously never worked for our character team. Props teams have recently begun their explorations developing the various chips and ports necessary to support the upcoming hacking gameplay currently scheduled for Alpha 315. Now, while there will be a variety of high and low tech offerings, these were the, the conversation starters, if you will, to help us determine which direction visually we wanted to go in. They even created a handy animatic to see how the pieces all fit together along with a sneak peek at the hacking visual interface that we're gonna see a lot more of in ISC next quarter. Now recently you've seen the current exterior progress of the Aegis Redeemer during Invictus. So let's take a look inside at the continuing work on the interior with a look at gray box progress on the man turret, remote turret bay, and habitation module. Vehicle teams have also begun looking at the Constellation dash controls as they prepare to convert it to utilize the updated interactive cockpit experience. Now before you jump into the comments, the physical buttons you see here are just temporary placeholders as the intention is still very much for this RSI stalwart to maintain its touchscreen holographic interface whenever possible. In addition to that, the Ares Starfighter, currently on the public roadmap scheduled for an Alpha 315 release, is making its way through the white box phase of our ship pipeline. Now, after recent work on the Mercury Star Runner and the Hercules Star Lifter, I've no doubt this will become another fantastic addition to the Crusader lineup when it arrives towards the end of this year. And since we're on Crusader, let's take a look at these final art images of the Crusader shuttle that will whip zoom players around from platform to platform when it arrives in the upcoming Alpha 314. And before you ask, no, you cannot has one. Well, maybe if you ask John Crew really, really nicely, that could change one day. Now I'm absolutely not empowered to say this, uh, but you should ask him anyway, because I really won't. Moving along, last time we took our first look at Horizon by Night, so let's continue that journey with these images from the lighting team as they continue their work creating an atmosphere that's truly unique from its daytime companion. I'll just let these images speak for themselves. 
So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Invictus is more than just a chance for players to experience our capital ships up close and personal. It's also an opportunity for our developers to push needed technologies to the forefront in ways that will benefit the entire Persistent Universe going forward. That Grey Cat should feel free to make as many industrially themed armors as they'd like. And that between its stylish ships, the shuttles, and the landing zones, Crusader is fast becoming a fan favorite manufacturer. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. <laughs>